Sanctuary, and for those that are connecting on our online campus, I want to give you a few moments to get yourselves settled as you're entering into the online campus. And um, it is our continued prayer that you had a victorious day today, and we're thanking God that we accomplished whatever we needed to accomplish, and the Lord was with us. We thank God for his protection and for him providing everything that we have need of. All right. As they're gathering on the campus and they're coming in to the sanctuary, we're just going to uh, remind you that next week, our Bible study next Wednesday, if we live in the Lord, will will be online only. Next week, you want me to say that again? All right, next week. Our online Bible study will be, our Bible study will be online only. As as we stated, thank you for that. Yeah, uh, thank you. You all are great. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. But you, you, you yeah, yeah, yeah. But you are about a half a step back. <laughs> Y'all, come on, stick with me. Stick with me. Uh, but, but. Um, as we uh, stated in our in our church business meeting uh, last month, um, going forward on the first Wednesday of the month and the fourth Wednesday of the month, we will be in the sanctuary and on the online campus. And on the other Wednesdays, second, third, and Wednesday is, when there is a fifth Wednesday, we will be online. Thank you. Um, and for our music worship ministry, our music worship ministry uh, rehearsals will be on Thursdays here. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, all right. As we often say, church is not the place where fun goes to die. Amen? So I think we had enough time to settle in and those that are connecting with us on, on the online campus, we uh we're we're ready to get started so brief word of prayer father in the name of jesus we thank you for your goodness your grace and for your mercy we thank you for just being our god our savior our king our redeemer lord god we thank you for your protection throughout this day we thank you for this congregation that you placed us in and we pray lord god as always that you would be the teacher in our class, open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of your law. Please help us, Lord, to be doers of your word, not hearers only. We pray for your body all over the world, Lord God. Help us to look up because we believe according to your word that our redemption is in fact drawing nigh. So bless us in our time together as we look into your word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Again, it's good to see everybody. Um, I want to talk from a uh, subject, church on alert, church on alert. Um, we, um, well, uh, thinking back on my military days when uh, things were going on in, in our training, uh, we would oftentimes be on alert status, especially when we were uh, stationed in South Korea, because it was rumored that in the winter time, when that when the Yellow River uh, froze, then the North Koreans as well as the Chinese could come on over. And there was a, 
I was stationed. I did two tours in South Korea, and my second tour, I was stationed closer to North Korea. In fact, it was so close. What they told us is that if the planes from North Korea took off, they could fly toward the South, release their bombs while they were still in North Korean airspace, and just turn around. They they wouldn't have to cross the airspace of uh, South Korea. And so they said that if uh, we had an expression, if the balloon goes up, that means if the stuff jumps off, uh, our life expectancy was less than a minute for everybody who was on the base. So oftentimes we would be on alert status. And sometimes that would cause us to have to wear our, our chemical agent suits for eight hours and the gas mask. You have to walk around, do everything you're supposed to do, and you would, you would sweat. I mean, after a short time, I would take my gas mask off and pour out the sweat, and then I have to put it right back on. But th 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 one of those things was called a mop four exercise. It was training us so that if we were under a chemical attack, we can know that we can still function with all that all that gear on. So oftentimes they would put us on alert status. So I just thought about that. I, you, you all know what I ask you to do all the time. Thank you. Uh, afraid for my mind. But um, I just thought that this was a good thing for us to deal with tonight. Um, and also, just let me say for those that are on our campus and those that are in our leadership uh, positions or, or those who hold leadership uh, positions, um, I don't like to mandate stuff because I believe it should be in your heart, you know. And um, But we have been asking uh, for a better attendance at our prayer services, a better attendance at our men's prayer on Saturdays, and a better attendance on our uh, corporate prayer on Sundays. So I just want to just point that out, point that out. Uh, that's a part of being on alert. Uh, the, uh, you, uh, the scripture tells us in one place that we ought to always pray and not faint. And uh, the, the scripture talks about my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. So I, I think it, it is, especially as we see the day approaching, there are things that are going on all over the world that points to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we as, as the church, as a part of the body of Jesus Christ, we can't be sleeping. Uh, we should not uh, be asleep. So I'm calling for a church alert. <laughs> um, and uh, just let me say, I think we need to re-engage in some of our best practices that that we have for whatever reason, not throwing shade or blame, but we have kind of laxed on. Uh, I remember years ago when I was on security, uh, that we it, it was told to us that we would have to be there 30 minutes before service. So I think we need to pick that back up. So uh, just some things that we need to have reestablished and reengaged, not new, but we might have let them go for so long that it may seem new to some. But I think we need to get back to that. Uh, all right. Okay. I got two. Amen. So, all right. Uh, there you go. I sound like an auctioneer. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to First John, chapter number four. First John, chapter number four. All right. First John, chapter number four. Church alert, church alert. That's my thought pattern. And hopefully we, we can draw a good picture out of what we will discuss. I believe what the Lord has given me tonight. First so John chapter four, verse number one. Of course, I have the 
Amplified Classic Version. All right. And this is what it says. First John chapter number four, verse number one. Beloved, do not put faith in every spirit, but prove, test the spirits to discover whether they proceed from God. For many false prophets have gone forth into the world. See that? So this is what the writer is telling his audience. Test the spirits. Don't put faith in every spirit because every spirit is not of God. All right? So that's a part of being on alert. All right? We have to be able to be discerning. All right? And... uh kind of in that flow, there was an account in the Gospels. We're going to turn to Mark, the ninth chapter. There was an account in the Gospels where this man had a son who, who was under the power and influence of the devil. And the father loved his son, and he brought his son to Jesus I'm sorry, he brought his son to the disciples first. And the disciples, they couldn't help him. They couldn't help him. And so the man brought him to Jesus. And Jesus was talking to the, to the father of the, of the young man. And uh, he asked him, do you believe that I can do this? And uh, he said, yes, Lord, I believe. But then... Right after that, he said, help my unbelief. So there is sometimes, even in those of us who have a certain level of belief, there's a certain level of unbelief. And we are reminded uh, in Scripture, I believe James uh, lets us know that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, and let not that man think that he shall receive anything from God. So, and then the Bible lets us know in one of the Gospels that all we need is the pure, genuine faith of a mustard seed. All right? But, but, but this was the condition of the man's son, and he brought him to the disciples, to the followers of Jesus, and they were not able to help. Praise the Lord, Sister Bessie, Sister Tasha, Minister Marshana, Sister Lisa, thanks for connecting with us tonight. So, in the crux of the matter, Jesus in Mark 9 healed the man, healed the man's son. And I want to go to 28, the 28th verse, and this is what it says. Uh, and when he had gone indoors, talking about Jesus, when he had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not drive it out? It, it, how come we weren't able to do it? Uh, verse 29, and he replied to them, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer and fasting. Alert, right? Uh, th there's some things that we're going to have to push our plates back for. Um, and, and because we have family members, associates, friends, brothers, and sisters who need certain levels of deliverance. And, and, and God has given us power. He has given us power. Um, and we have to correctly flow in the power that has been given to us by God. And, 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 uh, uh, it's important, it's important uh, uh, to kind of stay in the flow of flowing in the power that God gives us and in the authority that God gives us. And we have to operate it, we have to operate within that, all right? I want to move to Acts chapter number 10. I'm trying to paint a, paint a picture of the necessity and the requirement for our church being on alert. And you don't have to have a title to be on alert. 
All right. You have a you have a title. If you're saved, you got a title. All right. Uh, uh, and here in this encounter in the 10th chapter of Acts, we are familiar because Peter is going to the house of Cornelius. And again, we understand the relationship that Peter had with Gentiles. God had to show him uh, three times this vision up on the roof. Uh, rise, Peter, slay and eat. No, oh, I'm a Jew. I don't eat that kind of stuff. But God had to show him what I call clean, how you're going to call it unclean, you see. So, so, and then the men went from Cornelius' house. Praise the Lord, Pastor Elaine. Thanks for connecting. Sister Franklin and Sister Roberta, thank you for connecting with us tonight. So here Peter is at Cornelius' house and he's preaching, right? And, and he's preaching to the Gentiles about Jesus Christ. And I picked up something here in this 38th verse of the 10th chapter of Acts. And I want to just deal with something for a moment. Uh, in Acts chapter number 10, verse number 38, here's what it says in the Amplified. Now, Peter is in his preaching. He says, how God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power, how he went about doing good and in particular curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil for God was with him. What I want to pull out from here is that sometimes, and we, we, I think we can acknowledge this even if we have not experienced this, but sometimes we can have, there can be an occasion for even somebody who is saved to be harassed and oppressed by the devil, not possessed, because I don't believe that a person can have the Holy Ghost and then be possessed by the devil. I don't believe that, but they can be harassed and oppressed because of different things that's happening maybe in their lives or whatever. But one of the wonderful things that this verse pointed out, Jesus, he says, and in particular, curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil. For God was with him. Now, if we really want to be transparent and tell the truth, sometimes the devil harasses us <laughs> and makes us act out of, or not makes us, but we give in and act out of character. Uh, uh, um, so, 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 what I'm trying to do is point us to the fact that we need to be on alert as a church because. People can be harassed. And because of what they are going through and experiencing, they can even be oppressed by the power of the devil and cause them to act out of character. All right. And then some people can just be possessed. There's a difference. All right. But God, He knows. But for us as a church, we need to be alert. Right. We need to be alert. We need to be alert. And because remember the son, the son that was healed, his father loved him. And his father saw the suffering that he was going through. And, and, and so so we have to as the church, we have to love people enough to want to see them delivered. And do what it takes to bring about. Do what we can do to bring about their deliverance. So we have to we have to be on one accord. We have to amp up our prayer life, if you will, our corporate prayer, and uh, uh, our fasting with a purpose, not just mechanical fasting. Uh, yeah. Well, you, um, if you go and look at uh, Isaiah, the 58th chapter, we're not going to turn to it, but it shows you the type of fast that God 
is calling for uh, to to undo heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free. Hmm? I, just, just do a quick cursory look in your own minds and think about, yeah, so-and-so is oppressed with this and so-and-so is oppressed with that. We can fast and ask God to move, right? So the oppressed can be set free, right? This is, I think this is one of the indicators, if you will, of a church being alert, all right? Walk with me to 2 Corinthians, all right? Because it's not about an individual person. We got to understand that there's some things that's happening in the spiritual realm that, that we may not be able to see, all right? We, uh, let me, uh, what did I ask for, 2 Corinthians? Let's go to chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. See, these are, these are scriptures that we know. But oftentimes, we need to be reminded and we need to uh, 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 allow this word to become flesh in our lives. Praise the Lord, Sister Doris Hill, Sister Jessica Flanagan. Thanks for connecting with us tonight. Here we are in 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. Now, Paul is speaking to the saints at Corinth here. Here's what it says, beginning at verse number three. I have again the Amplified Classic Version. Verse three, for though we walk, live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh, using mere human weapons. We have to understand that. That's a part of our being on alert, all right? Verse number four. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. All right? But they are mighty before God. You know why they're mighty before God? Because he's the one that gave us the weapons. huh? But they are mighty before God for the overthrow, watch this, and destruction of strongholds. So oftentimes, we could encounter our brothers or sisters or even family members that might not even be saved yet, and we can be aware of certain strongholds that, that they're dealing with or certain, you call it a habit, but we just call it what the Bible called it, a stronghold. It has a stronghold on them, right? But we have these weapons that if we use them correctly, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. So, and this verse says, these are weapons of our warfare, right? So that means God has given us the authority and the ability to use these weapons accurately, right? And overthrow and destroy strongholds in somebody's life. As if we believe it. Now, if we don't believe it, it's not going to happen. All right? Verse number five, inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. You see that? And we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ the Messiah the anointed one. See that? Being in readiness, watch this, to punish every insubordinate for his disobedience. Watch now, when your own submission and obedience as a church are fully secured and complete. We can't help nobody if we're not allowing God to help us. Huh? Huh? Uh, uh, just let me point us to something that we read. Remember those seven sons of Sceva? Jesus I know. Paul I know. But who are you? See, this is not a plaything. When you on alert, when we were on alert in the military, we had to check our gear, right? Make sure you had all your equipment. Make sure you had, one of my captains would say, Full battle regalia. 
I mean, you got all your ammo pouches are full with magazines, but real bullets, not no dummy rounds, but real bullets, right? And he would, you know, check, check everything. And uh, uh, when, you're, when you're on submission, so that means we have to be continually submissive to God, right? We have to be continually obedient to God as a church, right? Then we will be able to be on alert status and overthrow some things. Hmm? But we can't overthrow the things that we ought to be overthrowing, right, if we're not obedient to God. Hmm? If we're not obedient to God. Again, it's not a human fight. Huh? It's a, it, it's a fight with, with spiritual weapons. And we want God to fight for us. I, yeah, we want him to fight for us because God's always victorious. So if there's any failure, where's the failure? Come on, talk to me. Oh, I'm going to put my glasses on. I want to I wanna see you. Say, <laughs> there you are. So since God is, there's no failure in God. If there's a failure, failure. All right. All right. Ephesians chapter number one. Ephesians chapter number one. Uh, see, now we're going to get to a point where we're looking at where the fight is really going on. Where the fight is really going on. Paul now, speaking to the saints at Ephesus, he's talking about Jesus, and he's, and he's talking about the resurrection. He just celebrated the resurrection. All right? Verse number 20 of Ephesians chapter number 1, Amplified Classic says, when he exerted, I'm sorry, which he exerted, talking about the power of God, which he exerted in Christ, and he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. So there's, a, there's, there's some combat, if you will, that's going on in heavenly places. Huh? There's, some, there's some fighting going on. Watch this. Verse 21, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. So these are some things that are going on in the heavenlies, right? And every name that is named above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are to come. So there's some fighting going on. There's some spiritual warfare going on against powers, against dominions, and against authorities. I think I've said before that cities, states, and countries have spirits because the 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 hierarchy of the lowercase g, God of this world, he has dispatched certain spirits in certain areas. And, and they are a well-organized group. But remember what Jesus said. Upon the revelation and understanding of who Jesus really is, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates, the powers of hell, shall not prevail against it. So we have to know and understand that we are in a real war. Hmm? Even, even if nothing happens for a while, we're still in a war, right? Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3, verse number 9. Are you all tracking with me? All right, I'm not losing anybody, am I? All right, good. Ephesians 3 and 9, Paul also, Paul still speaking, also to enlighten all men and make plain to them what is the plan regarding the Gentiles and providing for the salvation of all men. So he's talking about the mystery of the gospel here. He says, of the mystery kept hidden 
through the ages and concealed until now in the mind of God who created all things by Christ Jesus. Watch this. Verse, verse 10. Here's the purpose. The purpose is that through the church, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God in all its infinite variety and innumerable aspects might now be made known, watch, to the angelic rulers and authorities. Remember, we're talking about far above all authorities, powers, and dominions. So Paul is expanding it for their understanding and our understanding. The purpose is that through the church, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God in all its infinite variety and innumerable aspects might now be made known to the angelic rulers and authorities, principalities and powers in the heavenly sphere. So what Paul is saying, God's going to use the church to show these powers just how powerful God is. But he can't use us if we ain't on alert. But this is his purpose. Is that in your Bible? Okay. So, so, so we see God's going to show them, hmm, and he wants to use us to show them. Not that we can brag, not that we can be arrogant. And watch this we don't attack the devil. We resist him. Hmm? I want to see you. Yes, we do. We, we stand. Right? Having, to, having done all to stand, stand therefore. Right? So, because God's going to fight for us, but he wants us to stand. He wants us to stand with the equipment that he's given us. Right? We don't have to attack the devil. We resist him, and if we resist him the way that God wants us to resist him, what will he do? That's in the Bible, James 4 and 7. We'll get there, but if I don't, you know where it is. Hmm? So we don't have to attack the devil. We just resist him. Hmm? But we have to have all the armor on. Huh? We have to know the word of God. Isn't that what Jesus used? Huh? He used the word. It is written. It is written. It is written. He used what he is. He is the word and he used the word. Huh? Lord have mercy. So what do we what do we use? That's what we should be using. Hmm? The word. We should use the word. But we got, to, how can you use something you don't know? Hmm? I don't know how to use this thing. Why? <laughs> I don't know how to, what do you mean you don't know how to use it? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Watch this. Verse number 11, I'm still there. This is in accordance with the terms of the eternal and timeless purpose which he has realized and carried into effect in the person of Christ Jesus our Lord. See what we got in Jesus? Huh? Hmm? All right. Ephesians 6. We're almost, we're almost through, believe it or not. You know, when we used to go on alert, uh, uh, the battalion commander rank is like a colonel. Uh, lieutenant colonel and then the colonel but most of the time the b battalion commander is like the rank of a lieutenant colonel and a battalion usually has four companies and a company commander has in the army at least when I was in company commander has a captain so you got A company, B company, C company and D company, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie and Delta anyway and when we would get ready to go on alert, we have a battalion formation. That means all the companies had to be there. And the, and the battalion commander would come out. And the 
the command sergeant major, that's the rank of someone that's not an officer, but that's, that's the highest non-commissioned officer. He would call, it, it, this is a sight to behold, he would call the whole battalion to attention. You're talking about 1,500 soldiers out there on the field. And he would say, battalion attention. And all you would hear is boots going together like, whoo. Them soldiers was ready. Pray for my mind. Jesus is the captain of our salvation. All right, it just, that was just free. I'm not going to charge you off of that. But it, but it, do you see the correlation? Huh? We were ready. Oh, Lord. I was in the 2nd Infantry Division, and our motto was fit to fight, thinking war. Second to none, we don't run. And somebody else would come back and say, you better not run. Okay, well, anyway, Ephesians 6, <laughs> Ephesians 6, verse 10. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Amplified Classic unpacks it. Be empowered through your union with him. How much time are we spending with him? Hmm? Draw your strength from him again. We ain't got no physical strength to fight this kind of war. Huh? That strength which his boundless might provide. It's God's strength. Huh? But he wants us to be strong in him. Right? If, we ain't, if we're not praying as we ought to, if we're not seeking God, pushing back our plate, fasting as we ought to, where's our strength? Where, where's our strength? I used to go. Enough. Sometimes <laughs> you need your brother and your, well, all the time you need your brother and your sister, especially when we come together. You need we need one another. Okay, verse eleven, familiar. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier. Isn't this what uh, Minister Marshana shared with us? Put on. God's whole armor, right? The armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, not your own armor, but God's armor, that you may be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Put it on. Here's a reminder again in verse 12. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents. That's not what we're doing, because some of us used to knuckle up. But we can't do that now. I'm sorry, that Brooklyn's kind of slipped in there on that one. But against the despotism, you see that? Against the powers, against the master spirits, who are the world rulers of this present darkness against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Remember I said there are spirits that are in different regions of the world? They ain't more powerful than God, though. But we need to be aware. That's why we have to be alert. We need to be aware. And we need to be able to Go into prayer mode quick. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. We ain't got to be frightened. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all, the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. He didn't say nothing about attacking, did he? He just said, stand. Huh? Stand. That you may be able to resist. You resist. But we can't do it in our own power or our own strength. I don't care how much we can bench press. 
<laughs> we can't do it in that kind of stress. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. All right? Stand, for 14, stand, therefore, hold your ground, right? Having tightened the belt of truth around your loins and having put on the breastplate of integrity and moral rectitude and right standing with God. Again, our relationship got to be right with God. You don't go on that battlefield. We got to be right with God. We got to be right with God. Uh, let me jump to something else. First Peter chapter five, because I know I got to wrap it up. I got about five more minutes, huh? Okay. All right. Well, let's keep going then. All right. First Peter chapter five, verse number eight. Verse number eight. Here's Peter giving us some more things to think about as we are a church on alert. We're not Ghostbusters. <laughs> we're church. We're a church on alert, <laughs> right? <laughs> I just want to make sure y'all paying attention, right? We, we just, all right. We we uh, we ain't chasing nobody, uh, but we're not running either. So because God has told us what to do. Here's First Peter chapter five, verse number eight. Amplified Classic says, "Be well balanced." Let's not go crazy. I'm on alert. Nah, nah, nah. Come on, come on, come on. Be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind. Hmm? Be vigilant. That sounds like alert to me. And cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil. That enemy of yours. Who is the enemy of ours? All right, that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion. He ain't a lion. If he, if, like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. He wants to harass people. He wants to oppress people, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 9 says, withstand him. It didn't say attack him. It said withstand him, right? Be firm in faith against his onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined, knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christians throughout the world. So you fight over here in L.A., and they'll fight in Chicago. But God supplies us with all the weapons. Huh? And isn't Jesus victorious? He got out with all power. So we win because he won. He has secured for us the victory. Just believe him. Huh? Don't run out in front of him. All right, last scripture. James 4 and 7. James 4 and 7. Amplified Classic says, So be subject to God. Resist the devil. Stand firm against him. And he will flee from you. Do you believe that? Amen. What kind of church are we? Thank you. I threw that underhand. Y'all should have knocked that over the right field wall. I was like, <laughs> Took your hat off and pointed at it. Uh, church on alert. Uh, let's be sober. Uh, let's be prayerful. Let's make an effort. When we have our prayer, if you can get there, get there. If you can't understand, like I said, I'm not mandating anything. You see what I'm saying? Because if it's in your heart, it's going to happen. You know, I'm, I'm like, uh, 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 no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm not doing that. Mm -mm. But I think we ought to be reminded that we need to be a church on alert. Look up. Our redemption is drawing nigh. Huh? So we got to be about God's business. 
Huh? We got to be about his business. Right? We got to fight a good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. All right. That's it for this evening. That's all I have. That's all I have for this evening. So pray for one another. Pray for those that are being harassed by the enemy. Pray for those that are being oppressed by the enemy. Right? And uh, let's do what God wants us to do. Let's stay on alert. Amen? All right. God bless you. If we live in the Lord's will, we'll see you Sunday. All right? Um, let me, can I speak a blessing over us before we go? All right. Let me find one. Sometimes I mix them up. Let me find something here. Will you give me a moment? You all are so kind. Uh, let's, let's, okay. I know where I want to go right there and scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Here it is. And when we dismiss, if you like to leave an offering, you can in the basket at the right before you exit. Now to him who is able to keep you without stumbling or slipping or falling and to present you unblemished, blameless and faultless before the presence of his glory in triumphant joy and exaltation with unspeakable ecstatic delight. To the one only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, splendor, majesty, might, and dominion, and power, and authority before all time, and now and forever, unto all the ages of eternity. In Jesus' name, 